I recently brought out this video about the uh, Seaspiracy and well I got a lot of heat about it and lots of criticism there was also quite a bit of support so this time I decided to kind of stay away from the movie as such and just talk about my own experience with the fish race. I did spend a good decade of my life working on ships that do go out and inspect fishing vessels. So I have seen the good, the bad and the ugly of fisheries out on the water, in the wild, like out at sea, which lots of people will have never seen and will probably never see. The thing is, there's a couple of different ways you can catch your fish. If you're talking about, say, tuna, swordfish, the, the big predators really, your options are somewhat limited. So obviously a net is always an option for everything, basically. How about nets are not all that popular when it comes to the inspections anyways. Beam trawlers. Beam trawlers are basically single ships that have massive big beams sticking out on the side and then a big net is attached to them. So those nets can be huge. I'm talking as big or big enough to fit the house that you're sitting on right now into the net. The biggest ones fit about 15 jumbo jets. That's a number that actually is true. They are freaking massive. Fact also is that they catch everything. Just like every net anywhere in the world, they are never ever selected. So whatever catches it will be in there. I personally met all these drag nets in the North Sea. Now. When I studied marine biology, I learned that there's nice, beautiful seagrass meadows in the North Sea. Then I had this unfortunate fortune of being allowed to dive behind one of these nets. And I always thought, okay, this net just gets gently dragged across the seabed and that's it. Reality is, there's massive big weights, like lead balls, attached to the bottom of it to basically make sure that nothing swims underneath. And the reality of that is that it digs into the ground, so if there ever was seagrass, it will be gone right afterwards. Because those nets actually dig into the ground. And that's just killing everything. Not just the fish it catches, but also the biodiversity, also the algae, also the seagrass, whatever used to be on that bottom, it will be gone afterwards. And in the North Sea, there's enough of these fishing boats that every square meter gets dragged through at least three times a year at least. And now that's quite a bit. So talk to any farmer in your neighborhood and they will tell you if he pushes his plow through all his fields three times a year, he won't be harvesting a lot. Now look at that. Let's talk long lines. And yes, there's tons of long lines out there. In the movie they were talking about wrapping them around the world for 500 rounds, I think. Uh, fair enough, it might be a little less than that, but still it is heaps. Lots and lots of long lines are out there every single day. Now, a long line is basically what, exactly what it sounds like. It's a freakishly long line. It's long enough to reach from southern Austria all the way to Vienna. In case you're not from Austria, it's long enough to reach at least 100 kilometers, which is about 70, 80 US miles. So, a fair bit. Now, on this long line, every couple of meters, every couple of yards, depending on where you come from, there is another line attached to it, which on its end has massive big hook, like 5 to 10 centimeters, depending on what they're trying to catch. Now, on each of these hooks, there will be squid. So, just doing the maths, you will already see that there's lots of squid or other fish involved in the catching procedure. Now, after a while, well, those were initially the ones that were meant to be caught dolphin safe. Tuna that is. Now, it turns out they are not exactly dolphin safe. What made them dolphin safe at the time was the shape of the hook. Really didn't work out. So I've been spending a lot of my time driving next to these long liners as they haul their long lines out of the water and saw lots of things being pulled out. So once, of course, there was tuna, which is what they're actually targeting but there was also lots of shark and you can see as they put the long lines out that they are in many cases targeting shark. It's a different bait, the hook is higher up in the water, it's basically very close to the surface, 
and it is specifically aiming for sharks. So sharks definitely on there. Dolphins, seen them pull them out. Turtles, seen lots of those. And the other thing that I did see was that once something is pulled out, chances are either it's dead already or it will be killed on board. And that is a simple reality. Well, those long lines get put out and then they collect them again a day later. So I did see a marlin once that was basically fighting for its life and it was buzzing all over the place and struggling to get off this line. And if you leave him on there for a day, he will be exhausted, he will be dying, he will have a heart attack, it's some way of, well, kicking the bucket basically. And yeah, that's what happens. So if you have the illusion of an animal that's bycatch being pulled on the boat and then being thrown back into the water, it's just never gonna happen. Because they will be dead the moment they come out of the water. Same, by the way, is true for dragnets. Because certain boats only have the license for fish, other ones have only the license for crab, shellfish. The fact is, they both catch exactly the same stuff. And half of it goes overboard as bycatch. Now, also there, I had this chance to be on a small rip, like Richard Hull inflatable bolt, trailing one of these trawlers. And basically there's big pipes that collect all the bycatch and they just go overboard. And my job at the time was to collect some of the bycatch. So I figured, okay, if I just drive the boat close to this pipe, I can collect some bycatch. Turns out it only took about two seconds to fill up the boat. So there is lots of bycatch. Same for the long lines. We had inspections and the guys basically cut open sharks, took the babies. Some sharks actually have baby sharks inside of them when they're pregnant and don't lay eggs. So I've seen them cut open the mama shark, get out the baby shark and take that to the galley. So all those things do happen and I'm pretty certain that if people were aware of what's happening out there, you would spend a lot more energy in trying to do something about it and spend a lot less energy in trying to make other people look bad about it. Persane fishing is one of them. So basically a big massive net that gets put out around a tuna school. So the idea is that one big net is laid around a whole school of tuna, usually used for the high value tuna. So bluefin, AKA red tuna, named after the color of its meat, which already is unfortunate. Now I have been there in the Mediterranean, which is where this fishery particularly happens. And it's a freaking slaughter if you look at it. So yes, the net just gets put around and then closed and then they get transferred into a cage and that cage gets pulled over to shore and then they get fed for the entire season. That's why some people still think that tuna is actually farmed and not caught in the wild. But bottom line is then they get shot out one by one. Why? Because tuna has this absolutely amazing skill of heating its own body up, just like we do. Only that if they are stressed a lot, they will heat up quite a bit and it decreases the value of the meat. So that's why we go through all the effort of shooting them one by one and not just pulling out the entire net. Now, bluefin tuna can be huge. So the theory is that they can grow up to four and a half meters. The reality again is that the biggest one that was caught in the last couple of years was not even quite two meters. So that alone is kind of telling a story. It basically means that we are out of grown up bluefin tuna. Now, I know in some places the stocks are actually bouncing back and they are getting better, but realistically, we are still down on a fraction of what we used to have. So, I don't know. Are we happy to have 5% of the original stock again? Or do we actually want to get back to, say, 20, 100? I mean, that's just food for thought. Think about it, you make the call. But yeah, we need a healthy ecosystem. We do need epic predators, the ones all the way up on the food chain. We also need the lower levels 
we need all of this we need the mix of all these different well i like to refer to them to kind of stones in a puzzle or if you like to play jenga just consider each species one single brick in the tower and what we are doing is we knock them out one by one until the whole thing is collapsed and that's the road we're going now on well but again just my thoughts and i have only seen a handful of fisheries firsthand but then again i've only spent about 10 15 years out on boats watching them and yes you do often see for example dolphins trailing drag nets you see dolphins inside per se nets and yes they do get the label and yes they will be certified and no they will not make it out alive so if you love dolphin consider your seafood consumption well anyways i hope you all learned a little bit about this if you have any more particular questions about any of the fisheries or other fishery methods please feel free to leave me a comment down below i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can or answer it in a future video there's obviously a lot more to be said about well mostly or the fair bit about fish farming as well there's so much to be said about it about shrimp farming i could tell you long stories about biological sustainable shrimp farms in thailand because i have seen those as well but yeah if you want to hear more about it let me know in the comments down below those were just my top three fisheries methods and see you next time bye